Hello guys and welcome back to Planet 40k. We've got another rate it or hate it video with the Tyranids, Tyranids Codex. Today we're going to be looking at the Hormagons. Now, I've done a few of these rate it or hate it videos so far on this channel. For the next video, I'll probably do something a little bit different just to mix it up a little bit. I just wanted to get a few videos out on this channel with Tyranids since the merger. So today we are looking at those Hormagons and we're rating or hating at the end of the video. Let's get into the data sheet to begin. They're on 28mm bases, cool, they're small infantry battle line, so you could have up to six of them, or six units of them. And most importantly, they've got the endless multitude keyword. There's 65 points for 10, 130 points for 20, so you've got max units of 20, which is nice. Fairly cheap, really. And let's get into their statistics then. So they've got a nice movement of 10 inches. They are rapid for infantry models that are battle line rapid toughness three what can you expect really five plus armor save yeah not great one mood piece leadership eight plus and oc is two which is actually very good very good they are battle line but when you can get 20 of these for fairly cheap nice so what i like most about that statistic or that stat line is that 10 inch movement it's going to be crucial and they do get even quicker than that now what I'm going to do is, I normally go to the weapons at this stage, I'm going to go straight to the abilities now, I'll come back to the weapons in a moment. Other than Synapse, they've got Bounding Leap, which is their unique ability, effectively allows them to declare a, char uh, declare a charge even though they've advanced this battle round. So what that means is you're pretty much always advancing them, there's absolutely no reason to not advance them. So they've got a 10 inch movement plus up to 6 inches of an advanced move, so up to 16 inches in a single movement phase and you still get to charge if you want to which is of course up to 12 inches so it's a threat range of 28 inches if you're maxing everything out i'm not expecting you to roll a 6 to advance and then roll a 12 to charge that's kind of crazy but worse things have happened or weirder things have happened now going towards those weapons then homogon talons Three attacks each, you're hitting on four, so you're missing half of your attacks there. Strength three, minus one AP, one damage. It's quite nice that we've got a bit of AP, but realistically they're not doing a lot. I mean, 20 models at 60 attacks, you're going to drop half of them instantly, that's 30, 30 hits. Strength three, you're wounding on fives, if not sixes. So yeah, you're doing sort of minimal damage at this point. Minus AP, like I said, is minus one AP is decent it's nice for these kind of lower tier weapons it's more about the volume here and you're probably only going to be doing any sort of work against infantry i mean you're going to be wounded on fives or sixes anyway whether it's a, an infantry or vehicle but if you're scratching at a vehicle scratching at an ekron monolith which has got a bazillion wounds and you're throwing out an extra you know a couple of wounds from it it's not really a lot is it it's not really doing much so you're better off saving it for actual infantry you can maybe kill one, two, or even three at a time. So that's the data sheet. It's pretty fairly, it's fairly straightforward, isn't it? It's not much to it. So we're going to move into my tactics. So when you're talking about hormagons or any kind of gaunts, gaunts, gargoyles, whatever you want to call them, you look no further than the unending swarm detachment. It's perfect because they've got the endless multitude keyword. So what do they get from the detachment rules? So they've got the unsurmountable odds. So if an endless multitude model was killed by in the, in the shooting phase, so you just lose one single model, you get to make a surge move. You roll a d6, and you get to move that many inches. If you roll a 5, you get to move 5 inches towards the closest enemy model. And in fact, it gets better than that because you can actually get into engagement range when doing so. And there's no restriction of doing it once per enemy shooting phase. You, if they keep losing models from, say, three different units, you can do it three times. So you can quickly gain a lot of movement, and it's not even your turn. Now, they won't be able to do it if they're battle shot. But if they're not battle shot, you're going to be moving up the board nice and easily. Now, you've got to bear in mind that the ability applies to the unit and not the model. So as long as the unit is getting closer or as close as possible to the enemy unit, then technically you could do some weird shenanigans where you're sort of skirting around because the unit will technically still be closer, but it should really be close as possible. 
So it's a bit of a grey area. I think you're probably better off just doing it properly, close as possible, because there is a stratagem, in fact, that says you can do other things. We'll get onto that later on. Now, this detachment has got a lot of cool features with the stratagems in particular. The first one, you've got synaptic goading, where you can not only get a re-roll to your surge roll, so if you roll like a one, you get to re-roll it, but instead of going directly towards the nearest enemy unit, you can instead move on to an objective. You don't have to end on the objective, you just have to go towards the, the closest objective, which of course could get you onto it. And this is all in your opponent's turn, don't forget. So maybe you're all good and ready for your command phase where you might start scoring some primary points. Now something to watch out for, in fact, with this surge move is if there's an enemy unit that's actually behind your gaunts and that enemy unit is the closest enemy unit, then technically, if you are doing a surge move, you need to be going backwards towards the enemy unit. So you may as well not do it, you may as well stay where you are. You don't have to do it, it just says you can. But it isn't always the way forward. Sometimes you are looking backwards when there's enemy units behind you. Now what else we've got in this attachment in terms of stratagems? We've got the unending wave stratagem. That's probably the best of the lot, in fact. I've really jumped early with this one. 2 CP. And you basically bring an entire full unit back from the dead when it's just been destroyed. You can't normally use stratagems on a unit that isn't there anymore, but in this case it allows you to do it. And that could be 130 points back. And you put it into strategic reserves, but that's massive. You need the CP for that. 2 CP. So you need to make sure you've always got 2 CP minimum in the bag. Team in masses, you've got that for a minus one to hit your unit, that's okay, not too bad. Offensively, you've got swarming masses for the sustained hits one, and that potentially will be working on critical hits on a five plus if you've got a model or a unit size of 15 or more models. So again, if you've got 60 attacks, and you're gonna miss with 30 of them because you're hitting on fours, but 20 of them will be on a five plus on average. So all of a sudden, you've got 50 hits from 60. That volume alone is going to be decent. It's going to be, even if you need to wound on fives or sixes, there's going to be plenty there. It's going to be enough there to hurt something. If you want to auto advance six inches, you've got the bounding advance strategy, which is working really nicely with this unit, in fact, because we've got the ability to advance and charge. So if you're going an auto six inches and then doing that charge move, it's just guaranteeing you're getting to where you want to go. And finally, the preservation imperative to remove the blast keyword from enemy weapons. It only will apply to one enemy unit. So that'd be four less shots per weapon technically, but some units have multiple blast weapons. And if you're taking blast away completely, because we're going to be considered having less than five models, that's going to help, especially if you've got a 20, a 20 bug unit. Now, when I'm playing my home gaunts, I'm using them to either target enemy units to hold them down so that they can't be moving because they're stuck within engagement range. Ideally, ones on objectives as well because we've got OC too, so we want to be bagging down an object, bagging down an enemy unit, holding onto an objective at the same time. Double bubble there, you're scoring as well as holding something down, or just jumping onto objectives in general. Again, our OC two is pretty powerful. Now, I'm not expecting the unit to survive because they're simply just fodder to me. In some people's eyes, 130 points might be quite expensive fodder. You could just break that unit down into a minimum unit of 10 for 65 points, maybe. Rush them up the battlefield, get onto an objective with your OC2 and just score, die, rinse and repeat. Remember, we're playing the unending swarm detachment, so you're going to have loads of bugs on your list, in your list. You could have six units of Hormagons, you can have six units of Termagons, you can have all sorts of... You have bugs everywhere, effectively. So your opponent is going to kind of struggle dealing with them all. In fact, speaking of which, like if you've got just purely bugs, okay, you're not going to do much damage to your opponent's list, because you've not got really any high damage at all. But all of their high damage weapons and high AP weapons and high, super high strength weapons are going to be completely redundant because if you're shooting a strength 18 weapon with you know six damage minus four ap into a, a gaunt unit you kill one well done you know what i mean it's whatever now ideally with this kind of detachment you want to be taking probably the swarm lord for two reasons you've got the nine inch synapse because nothing here is going to have synapse of course 
and you're also gaining CP every single battle for, every single battle round, which is going to be vital for all the stratagems that we've just spoke about. It's it's quite CP heavy, and yeah, you're going to be spending. I mean, you've optionally you could use a Hive Tyrant. There's a there's three out of there's three out of six of the stratagems are battle tactics, so they could be for free. The Swarming Masses one for the sustained hits, that's battle tactic. Bounding Advance for the six inch advance move is battle tactic, although your Hormagons could be further afield by then. And the Teeming Masses for a minus one to hit is also battle tactic, but the other ones won't be free with a Hive Tyrant, which is why I prefer the Swarm Lord in this situation, because you just get in CP. But let's move into the part of the video where I'm going to rate or hate the Tyranid Hormagons. Now, in Night Edition, I didn't use them a lot. In fact, I was purely Termagants, partly because the models absolutely sucked in Night Edition. They were so top heavy. Even with coins and blue tack and all sorts underneath the bases, they were still falling over. And that alone prevented me from using them. I just hated them. Now that they've got new models, they look cool. They're standing up a bit better. I'm more willing to actually give them a go. Now, I like what they do, I like their abilities, I like the speed. You've got to compare them to things like gargoyles. Gargoyles have also got the speed, they've also got the shots. Are they going to be tar pitting units in the same way? Yes and no, I'd rather be doing it with the Hormagons than the gargoyles. I mean, gargoyles are slightly more expensive, they're 80 points for 10, 160 for 20. Yes, they do have the ranged weapons, but they want to be shooting at range and then jumping on and off objectives. They don't really want to be tying stuff down, so they've got a slightly different battlefield role. Similarly with Termagants, they want to be shooting if they can, or just being, they're just getting in the way. Whereas Hormagons are literally gaining ground and getting into engagement range. So there's not many like them, and for that reason, I'm going to have to go with I like them. I like them. I think they're pretty decent, especially in this detachment. In other detachments, I'm not so sold. To be honest with you, I'm not so sold. But for this detachment, Unending Swarm, definitely.